Well, good evening, Jets fans. Just wanted to stop in for another late night chat. I am Green Bean. This is Green Bean Jets fan YouTube channel. Before I get started, please take a second, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and let me know what you think in the comments below. As most people who do comment already know, I love talking with you. I'm usually up pretty late doing just that, and uh, it's always a good time, and I'm happy to do it. Uh, so, I'm just popping in real quick while it's super duper quiet in my RV here uh, to talk about the Houston Texans and who they hired for their head coaching job. Now, the only reason that I'm talking about this is obviously because as it pertains to the Jets, the Deshaun Watson situation uh, is relevant. It, it, it is relevant. Remember, the rumor is that Deshaun Watson is uh, very unhappy down in Houston, and uh, partially responsible for that unhappiness is the manner in which they are pursuing the GM and the head coach. Okay? Oh, sorry about the shaking. It's an RV. It's tough in here. <laughs> um, so, there were bubblings that if they hired Eric Bieniemy, that was one of the guys that Deshaun Watson really coveted, that there may be a, a, uh, an opportunity to repair the relationship. Um, and then obviously the other one, and the reason why the Jets are so connected is because it was Robert Sala was another one that he wanted to play with as well. We got Sala, so Houston couldn't hire him obviously. So started all the rumors, and uh, and here we are today. So the Texans were the first team to fire their head coach in the 2020 season. They let Bill O'Brien go early in the season, and so it gave them really a a long head start. Excuse me, a long head start on the head coaching search. So it's really interesting that they're so late in the process now. Like they haven't, you know, found their head coach. One of the reasons for that is because head coaches, serious candidates, they don't want to go to the dumpster fire that is the Houston Texans, which is just so crazy to think about. Again, I still have this vision, this view of the Houston Texans as one of the good teams in the NFL. You know, just two, three years ago, they were division champs. And then, like, you know, for a few years in a row there, they were, you know, in contention for being the uh, division champs. So... To go from that all the way down to dumpster fire is an amazing turn of events. Um, and like Jerry Glanville, I think it was, says the NFL stands for not for long. And that could not apply to a team better than it than it does to the Houston Texans right now. You know, they, they have fallen from grace. So a lot of the, the serious candidate, the coveted candidates for head coach, they don't even want to go there. Um, they did interview Eberflus. They interviewed Staley right before he got hired by the Rams. Um, they wanted, oh, they refused to interview Salah. They ultimately only interviewed Bienemy, uh because of all the pressure from Deshaun Watson. At least, at least that's what we're led to believe. And it was really starting to look like Leslie Frazier, who's in, who's a respected coach but not a part of that first rung of head coaching candidates in 2021. It looked like Leslie, Leslie Frazier was going to be the guy. Um, and then out of nowhere, out of nowhere, they just hired the oldest NFL coach in history. Let me say that better. The oldest head coach in NFL history. The day he starts his first game as a head coach <clears throat> he will effectively be the oldest head coach to ever do that which is crazy because you think of guys like you know um bill parcells when he was our coach huh? like you, there are guys that you would think were older but he's 67 years old that's almost 70 right uh so he would effectively be the oldest head coach to ever do that you know to do the job and hold that position which is one strange thing because they have a young quarterback that they're trying to uh, keep on the team, maybe. Maybe not. 
but you would think with a group of young guys and all that that you would want somebody with some some energy now this guy's a respected coach I, I read a lot about him I'll be real honest with you this guy was nowhere near my radar um, but I did read some things lots of people in high places respect him but the other thing about him is he's never even held a coordinator position in the NFL the highest position he had was with the with the Chiefs um, when he was a position coach and passing game coordinator, uh, but he was also the assistant head coach for three years. You know how they do that. That's what, um, <clears throat> what's his name, Tony Dungy did with Herm Edwards. Herm Edwards was a defensive backs coach, but also an assistant head coach. So they do that sometimes. Uh, but that was the highest position that, that David Culley had. Uh, the other thing... I really do believe that this was the Texans not being able to hire any of the candidates that were legit candidates for the job. Now, he might be great. Remember when uh, Josh McDaniels uh, turned his back on the Colts? They ended up going to Plan B, and Frank Reich ended up being a great Plan B. He worked out probably better than McDaniels was uh, would. So we don't know what the future holds, but I will say this. Deshaun Watson is gone. I don't see any way that David Culley is going to come over there. Coming from the Ravens, he was their wide receivers coach and passing game coordinator. Uh, they had some trouble with their passing game specifically this year. Um, but they didn't even go for Roman. They went for the wide receivers coach, which it just doesn't seem like an inspired choice. Again, I don't know the man. Um, people seem to like him. I don't think he was interviewed by anybody else for head coach. So all the other vacancies, the Falcons, the Jets, the the Chargers, and, and everybody else. I think I might have said Staley was hired by the Rams. He was hired by the Chargers. He was from the Rams. I caught that. That's what that was. I'm like, wait a minute. What did I say 20 minutes ago? <laughs> uh, but look, man, it looks to me like the Sean Watson is one step closer to being out the door and this puts them in an even uh, weaker negotiating position because now that he absolutely doesn't want to come back like they didn't hire the coach and at least give them they could have had that narrative that well we hired the enemy and um, Deshaun Watson's kind of wants to stay now but we're just checking to see if people would woo us with a big offer that kind of facade is out the window uh, Deshaun Watson I they I I would be blown away if this was the move that gets to Sean Watson to be happy enough to remain in Houston. Just doesn't look like it. I heard this name. When I heard that the Texans hired their coach, I was convinced it was Leslie Frazier. When I saw David Culley, it didn't even register. I, I, I kept looking for Leslie Frazier on the first article I read, which was ESPN. I was like skimming it, and I was looking for Leslie Frazier. And I had to go back up to the top like, oh my God, that's the guy they hired. So I'm not going to get too much further into that tonight. But what I uh, am feeling about this is that they have zero interest in trying to let Deshaun Watson's feelings govern their actions. That's probably the right way to look at things from a managerial perspective. At the same time, you have a a true franchise quarterback you could at least meet him halfway on some things doesn't seem like they're doing that so what do you think you think this move pushes them further out the door you think it weakens their negotiating position like i do let me know in the comments i hope you guys are having a restful evening clearly i'm not putting together other videos and stuff but i had to make this for you let's end it right there have a good night go jets